The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Bow your heads with me in prayer, please. Lord, we thank you for this day that you have created and allowed us to share in. Will you take our minds and think through them? Take my lips and speak through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for your son, Jesus. Take our wills and put them in submission to yours. In Jesus Christ's holy and blessed name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. So most of you, in some way or the other, maybe not all of you, are on the internet. Clearly, all of you are on the internet. Some of you may know about memes. We've talked about these before, internet memes. It's a picture with a caption, usually, most of the time, for fun. Sometimes they can be mean or sad, but more often than not, it's a picture of a cat or a dog or a human doing something, and then there's a caption that's silly that goes with it. It's called memeing. <clears throat> And there's been this wonderful thing over the last few years that I've started to enjoy as I've entered into my mid-life. Uh, these, what are called adulting memes. Uh, it's usually a picture of somebody in their 30s or 40s looking crazy or pensive, doing something, and then there's a, you know, a caption above them to make fun of whatever it is that they're doing, however they're doing it. And I've really begun to enjoy these because they really make sense to me as I'm gotten older and begun to adult myself. So I just want to share a couple of these with you. Uh, one was this, this person who's just standing there in awe in front of a sink, and it says, you know you've been an adult when you get excited about a new cleaning sponge at the kitchen sink. Right? Literally did this last month. Those things get so nasty, and when you get that fresh new, oh, it's so good. And I just felt like, wow, I'm, I'm an adult. This one, though, I really appreciate because it's actually happened to us recently. This is another one with somebody in the kitchen looking very confused. Uh, and I've hit the age where I understand why people were happy to win an appliance. Of course, they're talking about all the game shows that we grew up with or some of us have been watching our whole lives. And, you know, you, as a kid, you see that and you're like, why are they excited about winning a blender? Now I get it. I totally need a new blender. Thank you, Mimi and Papa, for that blender. And so adulting has become this understanding that you're not a kid anymore, that there are responsibilities and things in your life that you didn't really know you needed before. More often than not, because as children, we don't really pay attention to what our parents are doing, the little things that keep us alive and clothed and from burning the house down and things like that. And so it's been fun, as Bethany and I have adulted together, and we learn these things, and Recently, in the last few winters, we've kind of gotten better at a couple that we've learned, a couple of these things that you never really noticed your parents doing, and then you go, oh, somebody did that. Somebody actually took care of that. 
Both of them are winter uh, moments. Uh, the first is, is actually something I don't think I ever had in my house. Bethany may have. Some of you may do this. Uh, but you may notice in winter something magical happens. All the moisture disappears. Right? Be all the humidity is gone and becomes very dry. Right? Your skin gets scaly and itchy and falls apart. And some of us get, you know, reactions and whatnot. And there's a cure apparently. Humidifiers. You put a humidifier in your house, you fill it with water, and woo, things get a little nicer. Not as much dry skin, uh, less proclivity for bloody noses when you wake up in the morning to blow them. It's amazing. Of course, somebody has to fill the humidifier with water every day. And sometimes that can be a pain because adulting is hard work. And after a long day and you sit on that couch, the last thing you want to do is, oh, I have to go upstairs, get the humidifier, bring it down and fill it up. And sometimes we forget and things get dry and scratchy and itchy. The second one is, is actually in the same realm involving water. And it's this amazing thing. So did you know that Christmas trees require water? Now, I, I remember vaguely my parents doing that. I didn't know that really you have to do it every day or two for them to survive. Because otherwise, if you go three or four days and then you go six or seven days, all of a sudden you notice all the needles on the ground. And then limbs just fall off when you bump into it. And then when you have to take the tree out of the house, oh, unless you're in front of one of those openings right by the window where you can just throw the tree right out, your house is a mess because it hasn't been given water in weeks. It's totally drained, dried up, useless, dying. Now, both of these make real good sense. It's science. In winter, humidity goes down, things get dry. They require water. Who thought of that? Wow. Adulting, right? And there's some days where I don't want to fill up the humidifier. And I totally forget, after a busy, hard day, to put the water in the tree, and, and it's terrible. And I realize that these are real examples of a winter issue, this dryness and this draining. But I also realized, ironically, and maybe perfectly, they also have a figurative, metaphorical dryness as well in the winter. The days get shorter and darker, and then the holidays hit. And then the holidays hit in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> And then the holidays hit in the middle of a pandemic when you or somebody you love has got some sort of disease or some sort of issue or there's a divorce or there's a death in the family. And it's like everything is sucking the moisture out of your life. And we become dry and drained and brittle. Saturday morning, yesterday morning, I went to the church to start prepping for today's sermon. And I sat down and I opened up the scriptures and I just did this. <sighs> And I literally said out loud, Lord, I am totally drained. I have no energy, barely have any want to do this. I'm just tired. You know, Christmas for the pastor is a lot of work. Not to mention the last six weeks since Thanksgiving and the last nine months of the pandemic. It's a lot of work. And some days we get there and we're like, I'm drained. I feel dried up. And before any of you go boo-hoo for the pastor, this isn't a boo-hoo moment. I love what I do. I love that I'm here. I know that I've been called here. This is not about that. It's just a realization, a, a fact. Trees require water. Pastors get tired sometimes. But clearly, I'm not the only one, right? I'm not the only one who gets drained and dried out during the holidays. I'm not the only one who's been a little tired and, hey, guess what? I'm done, Mr. Pandemic. You can go on and go about your business somewhere else now. And some of us here and out there in the interwebs, uh, this year, last 10 years, life is draining and dry. And sometimes you sit down and sometimes you don't even get up and you just go, I don't have anything left. And you can't even get up at the end of the day to go fill up the tree or the humidifier, and life gets more dry and more crackly and more itchy, and the, the, the needles fall off and the limbs start to get tired and fall apart, and you feel like, man, where did all the water in my life go? And after I sat there for a little bit, I just felt this urge from God to come over here and kneel and talk to him. And I did, I left, I was like, I can't write anything, I got nothing. And I came and we talked and I lifted, lifted up the prayers for the people and then we talked. And I said, God, I, I'm done. I'm so tired. I'm drained. I don't have anything. And we talked. 
and I prayed. And I said, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. You're going to have to give me some direction. I just got nothing left. And then, he, and, then, and then I felt this movement like, you know what you can preach on? Being drained. In the middle of a pandemic. In the middle of a holiday season. In the midst of so many of us who have had ups and downs this year. Why don't we just be honest with each other and say, it's been a really rough, dry, draining year. And I don't have any energy to go put the water in the tree or in the humidifier. Tonight, I'm just going to... Uh, and God said, give them a message. So I'm here today to remind you, to give you that message. Of course, through the scriptures and our prayers, we hear a little allusion to it in our opening collect. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that the light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It was this pouring that really I was drained and then I was pouring and it was drained and it was pouring. I was getting this whole I need to be filled up kind of feeling. And I figured there's probably a few out here and out there who need to hear this message again today in the midst of all that's going on, in the midst of all the draining and dryness. And so this colic was beautiful. Christ has come into this world as this baby, this Christmas gift to the world, and he has poured by God's Spirit this life into us, this light. And John talks about the very same thing today, and I, I'll paraphrase it. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. But to all who received him, this light and life, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. And I love some of these images and sentences that John sets forth, full of grace and truth. Notice that, full, not drained, not empty, not dried out, full of grace and truth. Through him was life, the light of all people. This is the light of the world, poured upon us into the hearts, the collect says. Poured like water, grace, truth, light, life. All these things poured into us by God, like the water that John talks about. Later in his gospel, when Jesus says, whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Grace, truth, light, life, water. You know, we have lots of names for Jesus. Son of God, Messiah, Prince of Peace. All of these wonderful names. King of Kings. And these are his names. And these other aspects and characteristics and metaphors. Light, life, grace, truth, water or what God sends us and fills us with and pours into our lives because he knows that at the end of a hard day or a hard season or a hard nine-month pandemic, which more months to go, or a life of up and down with our families or work or our diseases that we get drained, and he says, I'll keep pouring it. I'll keep pouring it. You notice at the end of John's other passage from later in John, he says, welling up from eternal life. He doesn't give you one bottle of water and send you on your way. You notice those days when you forget or you don't have the energy to get up and fill the Christmas tree or the humidifier? You know the water is still in the pipes? It's there. It didn't go away. And even if you get your water turned off, God forbid that ever happens, the water, at least some of it, is still in the pipes. It doesn't go away. It's waiting for you to receive it. This life, this light, this grace, this truth. These are all part and parcel. These are the parts of the whole of the gift of Christ at Christmas. That God has come to be among us, to dwell among us as flesh. But also to give us these gifts, knowing that the season of life that we're walking through in general, let alone the day or the season or the year or beyond, is draining and tiring sometimes. And some of us need to be told, don't give up. Don't give in. 
Don't forget that the Lord is waiting for you to receive him, to ask him to come and fill you. That moment that I knelt here, I can't explain it to you, but you, some of you, maybe all of you have felt this. I literally got up and I was like, now I can write a sermon. Literally 45 minutes earlier, I was like, I'm just going to go to sleep and if Carly comes, she can preach for me. I was that tired. And I got up after 45 minutes of talking to the Lord. I, don't, I can't explain it. I can just tell you that my faith called upon God's eternal flowing life and light and grace and truth. And I got up and I went over and I wrote the sermon and here it is. I don't know if it's any good. It doesn't really matter if it's entertaining. Okay, that's nice. But as I've always said, and I want to remind people, this is going to be me confessing and being honest. On one level, I don't really care if you like the sermon. I don't. I appreciate it when you say that. I do. I really do. What I want that sermon or every sermon to do is draw you closer to Jesus. If the sermon is drawing you closer to Jesus, then I've done my job. If you're hearing something new from the Word of God, then I'm doing my job. Is it nice that you're entertained? That, yeah, I'm a little, little, you know, I like to act a little bit. Who doesn't like an applause? But to know that one of you or five of you or ten of you may be filled with the Word today, the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may f be filled with the grace and the light and the truth of God, that is what gets me back up. And that's what God was doing with me yesterday. There's somebody in here, maybe a few of you, who needed to hear that. To know that the water of life is waiting and the most simple way to start, if you're feeling totally dried out like that tree or that humidifier, there's no moisture in your life, everything's running out, you're drained, just talk to him. It doesn't have to be fancy on your knees. It doesn't have to be Book of Common Prayer. Those are nice. Just talk. Just say, Lord, be with me. And then just tell him. He wants to hear from you. He wants to, to be with you. He wants to give you himself. That's literally why he became a baby. I mean, his you know, story is cute, but he became a baby so that we could become like him, that he could fill us with all those parts and characteristics of himself, give it to us, because he knows that this world can be a mess. So this Christmas, I remind each and every one of you that the water of life springing eternally waits for you. All you have to do is receive it again. And the most simple way to start is just to talk to God, which is praying. You don't have to ask him for you know, this to be cured or a million dollars or the new job. Just say, Lord, here I am. And he will say, I love you. I forgive you. I'm with you. Now and forever. Amen.